Jet TV Just in time Sanmanan Babogela Makaya and a very warm welcome to Jit TV News where we bring you nothing but politics, business, sports and also entertainment all in one experience kamala mandi le gugule tsintombe awacindi umahlaba A second look at your headlines are for today. 11 dead in a platinum mine accident in South Africa. Zimbabwe's economic crisis threatens a budding blueberry sector. Namibia through Chevron's lifeline Zim, Kenya, Uganda and battle for second. Now, 11 miners lost their lives and a further 75 were injured in an accident on Monday afternoon at 11 shaft in Impala, uh, Platinum's uh, Rustenburg Mines. Now, Nico Mueller, CEO of Implants, uh, rather, described the event as the darkest day in the history of the company, which has been operating for 57 years. The accident occurred after a personal hoisting um, Convenience, rather, which had been bringing miners to surface following the end of their shift, fell down the one kilometer um, shaft unexpectedly for a distance of about 200 meters. An investigation into the accident was underway. Implants said it had no estimate yet on how long the shift would be closed. We will make sure that we do not leave a single stone unturned to find out what the cause is and to prevent reoccurrence. Now the High Court has ordered the demolition of 18 houses in Chitungwita to pave the way for a private company. The affected house owners have since approached the High Court on an urgent base, uh, basis seeking to stop the imminent demolitions. Now, one love more, Chituro, uh, disposed uh, an affidavit stating that they lawfully acquired these stands. The applicants asserted the company Masmo Investments Private Limited, which also claims to have been awarded the same land by Chidungwiza municipality as the first um, respondent. Now, according to Chituro, when he was issued with an offer letter, it came with a condition that he was supposed to pay a total of 23,930 um, 23, US dollars, and he, uh, and he complied. Now, he said he was issued a lease agreement in September 2020, which cemented his rights to the stand. Welcome to Azambezi River Lodge, Victoria Falls. Nestled on the banks of the mighty Zambezi River, right on the edge of the national park, Azambezi occupies the most unique and finest spot with the tranquility and seclusion every traveler seeks. Each of its well-appointed rooms is either garden or river facing, allowing you to soak in the serenity of the environment. The award-winning restaurant Amlonga offers delectable cuisine, which includes our famous high teas. To explore Victoria Falls from this fine location, book any of our packages now. Azambezi River Lodge. Relax, refresh, replenish. Let's take a look at the African news. Now, the Sudanese army and paramilitaries exchanged shells on Monday from opposite banks um, of the Nile in the capital, Khartoum residents reported. In a seventh month of a war whose atrocities have been denounced by NGOs, this account is um, corroborated by other residents, including local activists who claim that dozens of civilians have been killed in the bombard, uh, bombardment rather, in recent weeks. In a report published late on Sunday, Human Rights Watch called on a UN Security Council to act to prevent further atrocities after the killing of hundreds of civilians in Tafar. Let's take a look now at the international news for today. Now, rescuers in India began digging manually Monday in hopes of reaching 41 construction workers who have been trapped in a collapsed mountain tunnel in the country's north for over 
two weeks. Now, a dozen men were taking turns of borrowing into the debris of handheld drilling tools for what was hoped would be the final stretch. Now, they had dug nearly one meter, 3.2 feet, and had up to 11 more meters to go. Now, the work being done now is designed to create a passageway for evacuating the trapped workers. We're breaking out the cut ahead. It'll be about another two hours. And then the intention is to do the next nine meters by hand tunnel. And that's, that's the situation at the moment. Let's get down now to the business side of news for today. Now, Zimbabwe's blueberry uh, production, one of the country's fastest growing crops, is under threat from a currency crisis and high borrowing cost. Now, an industry body said global consumption of the blue fruit has increased in recent years due to its perceived health benefits, which some studies say include helping to ward off several key, um, key risk rather health factors. Growers are also seeking income tax holidays, a removal of import duty for key inputs and a reduction in land levies as they nurse the nascent industry. Now, the government agencies, financial institutions and private investors will converge this Friday for an investment conference in Kadoma to law injection of money into development projects in Mashonaland West Province. Now, the inaugural event will be hosted by Minister of State for Provincial Affairs and Devolution for Mashonaland West, Mariana Kombo at Kadoma Hotel and Conference Center under the theme Unlocking and Unpacking Investment Opportunities Towards Achievement of Vision 2030 Through Domestic and Foreign Arrangements. Hewlett's, we believe in a sweet future. A sweet future for our country, planet and community. Protec was founded in 1982 with the mission of assisting previously disadvantaged youth for successful entry into STEM-based careers. Protec Tongot opened its doors in 1991 and from day one Tongot Hewlett has played a vital role in ensuring our continued success and growth. Each year, Protect Tongot supports approximately 120 learners from grades 10 to 12 with an aptitude in maths and science from low socioeconomic backgrounds. We get career exposure with site visits, career counselling and job shadowing to help us make a more informed career choice. Studying at Protec has allowed me to rank in the top 10 performing uh, electrical engineering graduates at the UT. Growing a sweet future is not only about financial support, it is also about creating opportunities. So Nat Hewlett has employed 33 Protec engineering students and have been a partner of Protec for over 30 years and our support will continue into the future. Hewlett's growing a sweet future. Now on your GTV News, we're the focus.
And finally, on your sports news for today. Now, host Namibia revived Zimbabwe's hopes of sneaking into the 2024 ICC Men's T20 World Cup tournament in the West Indies and USA after beating Kenya by six wickets in a top-of-the-table clash at the United Ground in Venduk yesterday. Now, the outcome revived Zimbabwe's fading hopes as the Chevrons, who registered the biggest T20 win in history against Rwanda yesterday, will now have to win their remaining matches against Nigeria and Kenya while hoping for a Kenya victory over Uganda tomorrow. Now, Uganda were loped, um, well loped rather, Nigeria by nine wickets in with 15 balls to spare in yesterday's late match to move to three wins from four matches together with Kenya in second place, whilst Zimbabwe and Kenya clash on the final day of qualifiers on Thursday in what might be a winner-take-all contest. And that is all from me to you. A huge thank you for joining me today. As always, kindly please comment and follow us on all our social media platforms on Twitter, um, Instagram, and also TikTok. Or rather, you can go to our website at www.jit-tv.tv. Signing out, it is Andile Kukule. It's in Dombia. Have yourselves an amazing day. Jet TV, just in time. Zimbabwe, Nika Yakanaka. Zimbabwe is a landlocked country between the Zambezi and Limpopo rivers, surrounded by SADC countries like South Africa, Botswana, Zambia, and Mozambique. The name Zimbabwe stems from a Shona term for Great Zimbabwe. It's the ruins of an ancient city dating back to between the 11th and 15th centuries are made entirely of stone and span over 1,800 acres. Ask us about arranging a visit here. The highlands are known for their natural environment with tourist destinations such as Nyanga, Chimanimane, Vumba and Chirinda Forest at Mount Selinda. Victoria Falls, one of the seven wonders and one of the world's biggest and most spectacular waterfalls, is located in the country's extreme northwest and is part of the Zambezi River. The Victoria Falls National Park is also in this area and is one of the eight main national parks in Zimbabwe, the largest of which is Wange National Park. Matowo Hills National Park is one of the country's most interesting parks from a cultural perspective. It's not only very scenic, it also has a rich human history. Once inhabited by Bushmen, there's a superb collection of well-preserved rock art dating back at least 13,000 years. Lake Kariba is one of the biggest man lakes that is famous for the mystical creature Nyami Nyami and is a popular African travel destination. Zimbabwe is showing a steady growth path economically according to the World Bank Review. This is a significant improvement after a two-year recession due to COVID-19 and other factors. Zimbabwe's agriculture has taken its status of being the breadbasket of Africa with its land reform program showing phenomenal signs of growth and yields produced by Zimbabweans for Zimbabweans. Land is certainly a good story to tell. Zimbabwe is now the fastest growing third world country in Africa and the world at large. Zimbabwe, Musha Wakanaka. Zimbabwe is blessed with amazing fauna and flora, minerals and many natural resources. It is one of the world's biggest producers of gold and the third biggest producers of platinum. The mining sector remains very lucrative with some of the world's largest platinum reserves being mined. The Marange diamond fields discovered in 2006 are considered the biggest diamond find in over a century. So if you need a world-class African country to do business while touring this majestic landscape and seeing the Big Five, Zimbabwe is the destination of choice. Zimbabwe. Zimba Zimbabwe.